This is Fat to Fierce. Welcome to the Confidence Chronicles. I'm your host, Amy English. Join me on this empowering adventure towards a healthier relationship with food, body, and self, one delicious bite at a time. Hello, welcome to episode number 40 of the Confidence Chronicles. I'm your host, Amy English. I don't really have a title for what we're going to talk about today, and I'm hoping that as I record this, um, the title will surface. But here's, first of all, (laughs) before I completely dive in, I want to invite you to follow along on this podcast adventure, okay? So if you're listening to this in Spotify or wherever, click the little follow button. This way you're notified every time a new episode goes live, which is typically every Thursday. But also, you're doing me a huge favor by giving me another follow, okay? So I appreciate it greatly. And also, if this podcast has been helpful for you, all right, in the 40 weeks that we've been doing this, then I'm going to invite you to leave a review. That helps push it out to more people, get more eyes and ears on this podcast. Because listen, I'm fired up today because what I'm really starting to not realize, because I've realized this all along, but what I'm really starting to sink into is the idea that there are so many people who really would benefit from the solution that is fat to fears. And and that's going to, I guess, segue me into the topic today. And, and I've done a couple of TikToks on this in the last week. I've also shared those on Facebook. Oh, oh, and before I forget, speaking of Facebook, I reopened the fat to fears Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook and you like Facebook groups and you'd like to be part of a community, it's free. Okay. I started the fat to fierce Facebook group. I think it was in 2019 and it's, I've, I've always loved it. It's been a great adventure for me. I've met some amazing women in that group. And last year in 2023, I closed it. I closed that group for a little while because I knew that I, it had become my safe space. Okay. It was my comfort zone being in that group. I shared a lot of fat to fierce, a lot of what I do, a lot of the concepts, a lot of the lessons in that Facebook group. I used to go live almost every week. And what I, what I came to realize is that I was keeping myself contained within that environment. And so I decided to archive it and go on and, and, and spread myself in other areas. Okay. That's when I created this podcast. Um, that's when I started going on TikTok and, and sharing more in those spaces, doing more videos, doing more talking. And so anyway, it was last week, I think I started to feel the nudge to reopen or unarchive the Facebook group. And so I went in and I asked the question to the people who are still there. Thank you. If you're listening to this, by the way, but I I went in and I asked if, you know, I said, Hey, I'm feeling the nudge to reopen this Facebook group. Who would be interested? Who would be interested in, in, you know, reopening this and talking about all the things fat to fears and there were several people who commented yes. So I decided to unarchive it. So that Facebook group is now open and it is live. And if you head over to Facebook and search on fat to fierce, or you can probably get to it from my, from my page on Facebook, Amy English CC. I think that's what it is. Amy English coaching and consulting. Anyway, find me on Facebook, find the group, ask to join. And when you join, when you ask to join the fat to fear, the fat to fierce Facebook group, say that 10 times fast, you're going to be asked, um, three questions, you know, simple questions. What do you hope to learn from this group? Would you like to continue receiving emails from me? And then I don't remember what the other question is. (laughs) 
So anyway, find me there. Join the group. Great group of women. All right. That said, <laughs> there are there are a lot of people who would benefit from the solution that is fat to fears. And I'm going to start today by talking about a TikTok rabbit hole that I went down last week and got me a little fired up. All right. So I went down the rabbit hole of the GLP-1 medications. Okay. These are the injections that people are taking for weight loss. There's a whole bunch of them. Okay. There's the, I know there's the ones for, for diabetes and then there's, there's, which some are using for weight loss and there's the ones for weight loss. Okay. And I want to, I want to say this before I, (laughs) before I, I go on my little rant here. First of all, if you've listened to me by now, you know that I, I truly believe that every person must find what works for them. Okay. So there are people who choose these medications for weight loss. There are people who choose surgery for weight loss. There are people who do intermittent fasting, who do different plans, who do all kinds of different things for weight loss. Okay. You got to find what works for you. Okay. That is most important. And I think when, all right. (laughs) I think that when we are, there's, first of all, there's so, there's so many different ways to focus on weight loss. All right. We are inundated with information about weight loss. You just go on TikTok or any of the social media channels and you will find a gazillion different ways and things to use. Okay. So while I absolutely believe it is important for everyone to find what works for them, I also believe we are inundated with information and that it can muddy the waters. And when we're solely focused on weight loss alone, we're not getting to the root of the problem. Okay, that's what I wanted to say going back to my rabbit hole. So I went on this rabbit hole with these GLP-1 medications. And what I discovered, there are a couple, a couple things that really highlighted things for me. There was a woman and I had commented on her, on her TikTok. She was talking about, she's had the really bad stomach issues after being on one of these medications for a brief time. And you know, she was frustrated because she couldn't, she had to come off of it and she couldn't go back on it and she didn't know what she was going to do. And I had commented and said, you know, would it be worthwhile to take a look at your relationship with food? Like, would it be worthwhile to do that internal work of understanding why there's the food voices of understanding why there's these constant urges for certain foods and why you feel like you have no control, like why it feels like food takes you out of your power. Okay. Would it be worthwhile to revisit or to visit that? Cause I mean, not revisit for, for many people, y'all have never even visited this, let alone revisit this. Okay. But taking a look at the relationship with food, not only that, but also taking a look at the relationship with your body, okay, which is what fat to fierce covers. So anyway, so I leave this really nice comment and she likes it and yada, yada, yada. Well, of course, if you've been on TikTok for, for any length of time, you know that as soon as you fully watch a video, comment on it, take any kind of action on that video, your FYP is going to be filled of that topic. All right. I have had to recurate my TikTok feed numerous times in the short time that I've been on TikTok, especially when I get on to um, like mysteries, <laughs> mysteries, crimes. Ugh, I can't like, I cannot get involved in the crime stuff because it just hurts my heart anyway. And this goes back to your environmental detox. Okay. If you remember from many, many episodes ago, we talked about the environmental detox, paying close attention to all the things coming at you. Okay. TikTok included. I have to curate my feed every once in a while, paying attention to how things feel. Anyway, okay. Let me get back on track here. So, so all these things are popping up in my, in my for you page, right? On TikTok. And, there was another video of a doctor. He, he, I don't, I don't know these people's names. Okay. I didn't, 
I didn't take that information down. But this particular doctor um, is a self-proclaimed expert on these GLP-1 medications, okay? And what he was doing <laughs> in this video is he, he, it was a video about all the supplements to take to help combat all the side effects people are experiencing from these medications. Okay. So it, it was literally, it was like watching an infomercial. It was like, okay, if you're having stomach issues, you can take this. And if you're having hair loss issues, you can take this. And if you're having this issue, you can take this. So there's all these supplements to, to combat the side effects that people are experiencing from being on these medications for weight loss. And I just sat here watching this and I'm like, why are we still twisting ourselves into pretzels <laughs> to lose weight? Why? Like, why are we taking now? Listen, I want to be, I want to be clear here. I understand that not everybody experiences these side effects. So if you're someone who has chosen um, a weight loss um, avenue, okay, and it's working for you, and you're not experiencing these side effects, and you're happy, then fantastic, carry on. I think that's amazing. Where I'm going with this is the fact that there are some people who are taking these medications, who are having the surgeries, who are doing the things where they're they're having side effects, things are happening. Um, they're, they're feeling worse or it's creating stomach issues, what have you. And it's like, what if we were to focus on the inside of taking our power back, of realizing we can take control of our relationship with food? We can feel better about our bodies. And guess what? When we feel better about our bodies, it's going to result in actions and behaviors that support us and support our journeys, all right? So maybe the answer, the, the answer is not continuing with a medication that is leaving you feeling like shit. Maybe there is a benefit to doing the internal work to change your behaviors, to change the way that you think about food and about yourself right? I mean, listen, I have maintained over 100 pound weight loss since, since my highest recorded weight of all time. Okay. I have maintained a weight loss of 100 pounds and I have done that. I have been able to do that because I changed my relationship with food and I changed my relationship with my body. Now, have I used things over the years to kind of help with that? Have I tried different eating plans and things like that to kind of complement the work that I've done? Absolutely. And I think that everybody should find what things work for them. But also doing this work that I teach is such an incredible compliment to whatever you choose. Now, I will tell you a short little story, which I think is fascinating. A couple of years ago, I did try a weight loss medication. It wasn't the injections, it was a pill. I don't remember the name of it. My doctor prescribed it and I tried it and it didn't work for me. In fact, I had been on it for um, 12 weeks. That was the max you could be on it. Um, and if you hadn't lost like a percentage of weight, then you, it was, you needed to come off of it. And I didn't, I'd only lost three pounds in the 12 weeks I was on it. And what that helped me see and realize is that because I'd already changed my relationship with food. Okay. I already eat in a way that's really healthy for me and for my body. And what this medication was doing is it was, um, it was quieting the food voices, but I don't have food voices anymore. So that wasn't something that I needed to combat. That wasn't something that I needed a solution for. And because I don't overeat or I rarely overeat, okay, I would say 95 to 96% of the time I don't overeat. I just eat, I pay attention to my body, right? So because I'm not somebody who consistently overeats or has food voices, the medication was pointless for me. It didn't work. And it didn't leave me. I did not feel good on it at all, like mentally. Um, 
at all. It actually significantly increased my anxiety, um, which was interesting because it was technically supposed to help with that, but it made mine worse. Um, it was just not, it was not a good experience at all. I was very happy to come off of that. And at that point I realized, okay, I've, you know, yeah, I may want to remove like 20 pounds right now, present day, and that's fine. But I'm just going to do that in a way that I know works for me. And that's not going to include any kind of, you know, medication. It just, it just didn't work for me. But here's this, is, and this speaks to the other point that I, that I often make. And that is that every human body is different. Okay. Every human body is going to respond differently. This is why you have some people who do have stomach issues or other kinds of issues, physical issues, when taking certain medications and others who don't. This is why some people are super successful with weight loss surgery while others are not. I mean, I will be honest with you, of all the people I know who have had weight loss surgery in their lives, it's 50-50. Half of them have done tremendously well and have maintained weight loss. The other half have not. They've gained it back or they've gained back a portion of it or what have you, right? Um, so again, it just goes to the point that every person is different. And with all of these solutions, now I'm getting to my point of today's episode, okay? <laughs> with all of these solutions that are available to us, there's a plethora, okay? The one thing, um, the many things that these solutions don't offer. Well, let me, let me say, let me stick to the one thing, okay? Because that's, that's an umbrella for all the other things. Okay, let me not try to over explain myself here, all right? The one thing that's missing <laughs> is how we take our power back, okay? How we take our power back from food, from this continuous yo-yo, from this thinking we're not enough or we're not worthy if we are not a certain size. I mean, enough already. Seriously, told you I was going to get fired up today, <laughs> didn't I? I think I said that earlier on. I, this is where my passion comes from for the work that I do. I will, I will potentially cry on today's episode. I can feel it brewing. All right, maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see. Let's take a breath, shall we? Let's take a collective breath together. This really does get me fired up because I see it every day. I see it on every social media app. I see the people out there talking about their success with weight loss. They're not showing what's happening behind the scenes, okay? Re One thing we've got to remember when we are looking at social media, okay, this is really important. We are, whatever we're seeing on social media is what somebody wants us to see. Okay. We are seeing the highlight reel. We are seeing the snippets that have been carefully curated, carefully selected for viewer, for audience. Okay. We're seeing what the person wants us to see. We're not seeing what's going on behind the scenes. All right. And I think that even on my social media, okay. I mean, I, I tend to be someone as I have been on this podcast and in, in a lot of my social media channels, someone who will share, I, I can get vulnerable. I can share the things I, I like to bring some of my inside out. Okay. So that, you know, you can see that you're not alone, right? Maybe some people disagree with that approach. I really don't give a shit, but the thing is, oh yeah. And I do cuss. Okay. So deal with that. If you don't like cussing, you probably don't want to listen to this episode. All right. But the thing is, <laughs> I, I like, I, while I like to share some of my inside, you're not going to see all of it. That's because I don't have a camera on me 24 seven, right? Did you ever see the Truman show? <laughs> oh my God, that movie, that movie threw me for a loop for a long time. I'm like, what if we're all on camera? What if we're all on TV? All right. Anyway, let me not go down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, my point in all of this, 
when you are watching things on social media and you are seeing people have tremendous success, you've got to remember there's stuff going on behind the scenes. There is stuff that they struggle with too, all right? And just because something works tremendously for one person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. Maybe there's something different out there for you, or maybe there's a different way to go about this, okay? And when we're talking specifically about weight loss, okay, specifically about that topic, then we want to be really careful in understanding that every human body is different. Everybody's going to react differently to different things. It, it's, it's, it's really the way that it is. And, and what breaks my heart is seeing people continue to struggle on this roller coaster and look for the next magic pill or the next magic shot or the next magic whatever, okay? When that magic is within you, that magic is inside of you. You have it, okay? And this is where I wanted to share the things that I believe are more important than weight loss. And this is getting into some of that magic, okay? The weight loss industry, we got to remember this, friends. We've got to remember this. The weight loss industry is a multi billion dollar machine, okay? It is high level marketing out there, all these things out there, okay? Billions and billions and billions of dollars on people continuing to try, to try, to try, to try, to do all these different things, to, like I said earlier, twist themselves into a pretzel, okay? I don't know why that's the uh, description that comes into my mind when I think about this, but it is doing backflips and all the different things, somersaults and cartwheels, trying to find the thing because this is the messaging that's coming at us. Like we're not enough. We're not worthy. We, you know, got to be that certain size, got to get into that BMI, got to, got to, got to, got to get there. Okay. But then there's this whole piece that's not being looked at the piece that's behind the scenes, the piece that's underneath. Why the hell we still struggle with food? Why we can't seem to shut off those food voices? We're so willing, so many people are so willing to take this medication to shut that off, which again, I'm not knocking it, okay? I get it. I get that people are struggling. I understand it. But wouldn't it be worthwhile to understand how you can do that for yourself? Sure, use the medication to help with weight loss, absolutely. But unless you want to, like, unless you want to be on that medication for the rest of your life, wouldn't it be worthwhile to understand how you can do this for yourself while you're on your weight loss journey? I think I've mentioned before in the podcast somewhere. It might've been on TikTok. I can't remember, but I have mentioned that I do have clients who are taking weight loss medication. I do have clients who have been through surgery. Okay. Here's the thing. And this is one of the benefits to coaching on this as you're on your weight loss journey. One of the huge benefits specifically to medication is that, okay. So some of the people who come to work with me, they are really focused on weight loss. Like they know that they have to heal their relationship with food and they're willing to, to do that. They're willing to explore that. They're willing to figure out how to stop stress eating, how to stop emotional eating. But what's, what's equally important, if not more important is weight loss. Okay. So the benefit to them working on weight loss via a medication or something in conjunction with me, in doing the coaching work, doing the work that, that we do together one-on-one -on -one, is that they're, because their work, because they're taking a medication to help with weight loss and that's working, it kind of takes that pressure off the table while we're working together one-on-one, -on -one, right? So in our sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, we're, we're unraveling, we're unwinding, we're kind of taking a peek behind the curtain as to what's created the relationship with food, right? Why they think they deserve a treat, why 
chocolate brings satisfaction, right? Because that like, listen, this is important information. Understanding why we look to certain foods for satisfaction, like having that information at your fingertips and being able to choose non-food related ways to bring satisfaction is huge but you've got to be really you've got to be willing to look at it you've got to be willing to peel back the curtain and see what's going on behind the scenes with you as you're continuing on your weight journey okay that's that's for anybody who wants something different than what the multi-billion dollar marketing machine continue to pushes out okay that's the difference here <laughs> And that then brings me to that question, like, what is more important than weight loss? Like, are there things more important than weight loss? I believe, yes, absolutely. There are things that are more important than weight loss. And I'm going to go over with you what I think they are. And yes, I wrote them down. Changing your eating habits, all the things I've just described, okay? Changing the thoughts about food that have been carried along for decades all right thinking that food is in control thinking that you deserve a treat thinking that you need chocolate as a reward or for satisfaction thinking that you need something salty and crunchy thinking that you just need something sweet because you've had a bad day all of that all of that it's all thoughts <laughs> it's all thoughts that have formed into beliefs that have formed into habits. It's what it is. And when you can start to take a closer look at that and understand that that's what that is, that's not you. That's not you at your core. That's not you as a person. You're not somebody who just needs to have a sweet treat after a bad day. No, you've just reinforced that behavior over time. That's why it continues to be this way. And I'm not knocking anyone who likes a sweet treat after a bad day, okay? I just went through two weeks <laughs> of band competitions. Both times I brought bags of Halloween candy. Who do you think ate most of it? <laughs> I'm dealing with a sugar hangover, okay? <laughs> I like chocolate. I like sweets. And I know this about myself. And this is why it is so important to be conscious of it. Had I been unconscious of it and just like kind of like willy nilly, I would have eaten a lot more. Did I eat more than I intended? Yes. Did I eat like I did in the past? No. Right. There's a difference. And the other thing, and this is the important takeaway with this little piece, is that it didn't spiral into days and weeks and months of me just being like, up. Ah, it's Halloween up. Oh, it's Thanksgiving up. Oh, it's Christmas. Might as well wait till the new year. No, no. Did I have some Halloween candy on Saturday? Yes, I did. Did that spiral into Sunday, Monday? Today is Tuesday when I'm recording this. No, it didn't. Okay. There's the difference in the past that would have spiraled that I would have been like oh, Halloween's in what? 10 days, however many days Halloween is in, might as well just wait till after that. Oh, you know, you know, like that's how the cycle would continue. Okay. All right. <laughs> so changing the eating habits means check in, checking your thoughts, your beliefs, and your habits. Okay. And realizing that just because they are this way today does not mean that they have to be this way tomorrow. And, and this is the big piece of this. Okay. You have the power to change them. You really do not need to rely on someone else to tell you what you should eat. Okay. If you're anything like me and you've been on a diet for more than a minute, <laughs> you already know what foods work for you and what foods don't. I guarantee it. We keep looking for these external solutions again, because they think of that really strong marketing initiative. Okay. Multi-billion dollar machine that's telling you, you need all this external help. All right. What if there's just a little bit of BS in that? It's marketing. Okay every single thing out there and yes like 
okay, I'm marketing too. This is my podcast. What I teach, what I offer, I charge money for. Of course, I'm a life coach, right? But here's the thing. Like, are you going to continue following something that tells you that like, oh, just take this and you'll have this magic solution, okay? This is what we've all been doing for so long. I tend to think like if all of this stuff worked long term, if all of this stuff that they continue to pump was sustainable, would we still have the the weight like obesity epidemic and all these other things that we talk about that 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 are existing in our world? If anything, the minute the the this whole diet scene, this whole monstrous machine, marketing machine kind of took root, I think it's gotten worse. Think about that for a second. It's intended to keep us going back looking for something else. And this is why with what I do, I'm directing people to take a look within themselves. Take a look within you because you have the answers that you need. And I only know this because I did the work myself, right? I saw it, I figured it out. I figured out the freaking solution. And now I wanna share it with all the people who continue to struggle, who are willing to take a look at something different. That's the key here, friends. If you're not willing to take a look inside and just kind of see how you're contributing to this go the, to this cycle continuing, and you're not willing to take the action to change it, well then probably what I offer is not for you. Okay. But if you're willing to take a look at your own role in this with love and compassion and curiosity, curiosity is key, by the way, then yeah, let's chat. But more importantly, like, like you can always book a connection call with me to see how working one-on-one -on -one can help. But what I also want to share, and I, I haven't shared this enough on this podcast, is that I created a program that can get you started like now, like today. In addition to listening to these podcast episodes, you go to my website, amyenglishcc.com, click on Fat to Fierce. There you're gonna see the program. It's $99. And let me tell you this, if you are on a weight loss journey, if you are taking medication, if you are doing any of the things, then this program for $99 is gonna be an incredible compliment to whatever you're doing. And the reason why is because it's going to teach you, I like to call it the three pillars, all right? It's gonna teach you how to change your thoughts. It's gonna teach you how like changing your thoughts is critical to changing your habits. That's your fierce mind. Recognizing that all the thoughts you think, like some of them, like the ones that don't feel good, the ones that you've carried for a really long time, maybe that aren't even true, weren't even yours to begin with, okay? That's really important is like kind of like cleaning out, cleaning out this, cleaning out the mind. I'm pointing at my head for those of you who aren't watching this right now. It's also about the fierce body. So the three pillars are mind, body, and heart, right? So it's like the fierce mind, fierce body. What the heck is that? That's just reconnecting with your physical form. We've talked a lot about that on this journey, on this podcast, learning to acknowledge your body, learning to accept your body, learning to appreciate your body, learning to listen to your body because understanding your physical hunger <laughs> is going to go a lot further than always listening to the mental and emotional chatter for food, right? Really being able to tune into your body and notice those signals huge game changer on your journey. Okay. And then the fierce heart. What the heck is that? That is learning to accept your emotions, accepting your emotions because they all come as part of this human package. Okay. Accepting them instead of resisting them. Because when we resist our emotions, when we resist that stress, that overwhelm, that sadness, that grief, that whatever, that's that's only continuing like the cycle of emotional eating if you're someone who eats to avoid those emotions, right? Restricting them. So it's accepting that all these emotions are part of the human package and it's, it's okay to feel them. In fact, it's necessary to allow them to feel them so that they don't get stuck and trapped in our bodies, which only like keeps the, the habits going, the habits that we use to distract those emotions, okay? 
That's fat to fierce in a nutshell. And in this course, if you go to the website, there are like video lessons. There's a workbook you can print out. There's all these tools available to you that you can use starting the minute you get it, the minute you get access and you can continue using them while you're on your journey. So I want to share that because, oh, and then there's also the Fat to Fierce Facebook group, right? That you can, that you can join as well as a continuation of this. So all this to say, if you are someone who wants to get off the damn yo-yo, if you are somebody who realizes like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'd like to learn how to maintain this. I'd like to learn how to get off this damn roller coaster, feel better about myself and feel, and just feel at peace with food and your body. Then please head to the website, grab the course, get started today. You can always email me if you have any questions too. Amy at amyenglishcc.com. All right. I'm going to wrap this up for today. I, as always, I thank you for being here and for listening and for following along on this journey. And I am always rooting for you and wishing you the best on your journey. All right. Until next week. Bye. Are you ready to take control of your eating, embrace your body and boost your confidence? Then let's get fierce. Start your fat to fierce journey today. Go to amyenglishcc.com for more resources and to book your discovery call.